We begin in Sri Lanka, where the country's new prime minister, Ranil Vikramasinghe, says the country desperately needs $75 million within the next few days just to afford essential imports, including medicine and fuel. He warned that Sri Lanka had enough petrol stocks for just a single day, but Sri Lankans have already been facing hard times. Sri Lanka's economic woes are hitting everyone hard, most noticeably in food and fuel. Petrol shortages mean rickshaw drivers face long queues to fill up. They're struggling to make ends meet. I don't have much fuel in my rickshaw. I've already been to three petrol stations, but there was no fuel in any of them. Even though they have some here at this station, the queue is too long. The resignation of Prime Minister Rajapaksa last week was not enough to quell the protests. His brother remains president, despite being mired in corruption allegations. Appointed last week, the new PM is now attempting to calm a furious nation, announcing measures to stop a total economic collapse, but those came with a dire warning. The next couple of months will be the most difficult ones of our lives. We must prepare ourselves to make some sacrifices and face the challenges of this period. Many Sri Lankans are already making difficult sacrifices. How will we manage without fuel? All the vehicles are here. We don't have any work now. This is our only job these days. There's nothing else to do. Reforms are on the way, but it could take more than an improvement in food and fuel supplies. It could even take the departure of the president to satisfy Sri Lankans calling for change. Pakyasoti Saravanamutu is the founder and executive director of the Center for Policy Alternatives in Colombo. Pakyasoti, thank you for joining us. The people of Sri Lanka are being asked to make further sacrifices by their new prime minister. To what extent are they willing? Well, this remains to be seen. I think, you know, if the prime minister and the government continuously speaks to the country and explains to them why we've got ourselves into this situation and what we need to get out of it, then I think there won't be so much of uh, unrest or disturbance in responding to the difficulties of the economic situation. But there is the other dimension, and that is the political one. I think there will be a unrest and the protesters will continue if the political reforms are not addressed as well. Would those political reforms include uh, the president leaving office? Do you think, do you expect that to be a demand that will have to be met in the, in the days ahead? Well, something has to be done with regard to responding to that core demand and persistent demand of the demonstrators. Perhaps a time frame has to be set. The executive presidency has to be abolished and also a definite date for a new election have also got to be mooted. How did it get to a point where, according to the new prime minister, there's a single day's worth of petrol left in the country? How did it get that far? Why were no appeals made earlier for support? Or were they? Well, I think it's because of the incompetence and incapacity to govern on the part of the Rajapaksa regime. They used up all our foreign exchange reserves in terms of paying creditors and international bondholders. And as a consequence, we didn't have any foreign exchange to get the bare essentials in terms of food fuel. What does this mean for those on the ground, for, the, for, for people and how they're living? How bad is the situation? Can they still afford food, for example, across the island? It's an unprecedentedly bad situation. It's the worst that this country has ever faced. There are people who don't have three square meals a day. There is a shortage of drugs. They're constantly standing in queues for fuel and for gas. So it's very, very grim. And as the prime minister has said, it's going to get worse. The prime minister also said that they need $75 million in the next few days. Where is that money going to come from? Well, hopefully the money will come from our friends in that India is one, Japan is another. We have to get the bridging funds uh, in order to tide us over the period before the IMF deal kicks in, if it is going to kick in. All right. Pakisoti Saravanamutu with the Center for Policy Alternatives in Colombo. That's the capital of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much.